Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice problem that was suggested by one of my viewers, Vladimir Kaplun. Thank you very much for the suggestion. We'll be doing a video on x squared equals 4 with 2 methods. And so we can kind of check already uploaded. All right, great. So we have this problem, x squared equals 4. It is a nice quadratic equation. And I'm going to be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. All right, great. So I'm also going to be showing, showing you a graph at the end. First method. So for my first method, I'm going to be basically writing the right hand side as a complex number. So I, I want to do get rid of the complex method first, get it over with, and now we're going to do the second one. So four, as you can imagine, uh, is a real number, but at the same time, it is a complex number. Why? Because all real numbers are complex numbers. Because any real number like four can be written as 4 plus 0i, where the real part is 4 and the imaginary part is 0. So all real numbers are basically complex numbers whose imaginary parts are 0. So we can go ahead and graph this on the complex plane with the real part and the imaginary part. Since the imaginary part is 0, obviously this number is going to appear on the real axis only. Uh, it's kind of like a projection basically, right? You can also think of it as a vector. And we have to worry about two things here. One of them is the distance from zero, which basically is defined by uh, the abs absolute value or modulus. So you can call that R, basically, for modulus. R for modulus. Isn't that interesting? And then we also need to worry about the theta, the angle the number makes. So if you have a number like this, then there's an angle theta. But in this case, since our number, the vector coincides, with the x-axis or the real axis, I should say, never mind, it's not the x-axis, the real axis, then the angle between them will be zero. Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to write uh, z as r times e to the power i theta. And then 4 can be written as 4 because its modulus is 4. Because it's a real number, its modulus is absolute value is itself, pretty much. If it's a negative real number, then its absolute value is going to be the positive version. Make sense? Easy, like if you had negative 4, its absolute value would be 4. So now we're going to multiply this by e to the power i theta. Theta is 0, but instead of 0, I just want to write, because it's not only 0, it can also rotate. We can make one rotation, get to the same point, we can make infinitely many rotations. So we're going to represent them as multiples of 2 pi. So we're going to write it as 2 and pi, where n is an integer. Obviously, the, this explains why there are infinitely many representations of the number 4 as a polar complex number. Make sense? Okay. So now, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get to work. So what was our equation? x squared equals 4, right? Yes. It kind of looks obvious, doesn't it? But let's do the non-obvious. x squared equals 4. I'm going to replace the 4 with x squared equals 4 times e to the power 2n pi i. Allow me to write the i at the end because it kind of looks a little better in my opinion. So the next thing we should do is obviously square root both sides, so on and so forth. But how do you square root something like this, right? And again, we're not going to get into the square roots, but rather we're going to use the natural log. Let's go ahead and natural log both sides, which is ln. Uh, some people say that ln is logarithm Napier is the my guy who worked on uh, I think this type of log, uh, logarithms, but I still believe it's the natural logs. Anyways, so we're going to do the following. ln both sides. And lning both sides is kind of good because we have e. That's going to uh, help us. And now we have ln x squared. And if x is real, obviously you want x to be positive when you write it as 2 ln x. But we don't have to worry about it right now because we're not necessarily dealing with real numbers. So we're going to bring this 2 to the front. 2 ln x, and then we're going to separate this, ln 4 plus ln e to the power 2n pi i. Obviously, there's a couple things we can do here, 2 ln x equals, ln 4 can be written as ln 2 squared, and that can be written as 2 ln 2, right? 4 is 2 squared, and then this guy, 
we can bring it to the front and ln e is going to be a 1. So we can just write 2n pi i. Make sense? So far, so good. Okay, great. So we were able to write our equation uh, or our number in polar form. And then we were able to ln both sides and then bring down the exponents. Now we have something that we can easily work with. Now, obviously, and this should be really, really obvious at this point, divide everything by 2 because notice that we can just get rid of them, right? So this gives us ln x equals ln 2 plus n pi i. n is an integer, remember that, multiples of pi multiply by i is going to give us what we want. So now, at this point, obviously, you want to solve for x, right? You, you don't want to leave it at ln x. So it would make sense if you can get x from here. And how do you get that? By using the identity. e to the power ln x equals x, right? So by using that identity, we can basically do e to the power both sides. Let's do it. e to the power ln x equals e to the power ln 2 plus n pi i. Now, e to the power ln x is just going to be x. And right-hand side, we can kind of split it up into e to the power ln 2 times e to the power n pi i. And obviously, e to the power ln 2, but for the same reason, is 2. So from here, x is going to be 2 times e to the power n pi i. Obviously, there's a couple different ways to represent it, which I'm going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. I hope I included that in the screenshot. Anyways, uh, what do you get from here? This basically gives you infinitely many solutions for x, right? There are infinitely many solutions because if you change the n value, you're going to get infinitely many solutions. But let's look at some specific values, such as n equals 0. If n is 0, then you get x equals 2 times e to the power 0, which is 2. Nice, right? Were you expecting that? If n is equal to 1, you're going to get x equals, and let me write it this way so you can see where that comes from. And if n is equal to 1, you're going to get 2 times e to the power pi i. But if you think about this, e to the power pi i is basically our number that has a one, uh, 2 as, I shouldn't do the unit circle, I should just do the real and imaginary. So we have as r equals 2 and the angle is pi. When the angle is pi, you're basically talking about this number here, and that is actually the real number negative 2. So this is equivalent to negative 2. So there are two solutions, 2 and negative 2. If n equals 2, you'll get another one, so on and so forth. It's just going to cycle back and forth. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha gives us. Yay! x squared equals this, gives us the two solutions. And obviously here, if you replace n, and either one is going to work, if you replace n with integers, even and odd are going to give you different solutions. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph at the end and we'll finish up. And as you can see here, oops, I forgot to mention the second method almost. So the second method uh, for this problem is x squared equals 4. You just square root both sides. You get square root of x squared equals square root of 4. Square root of x squared is the absolute value of x and this is 2. From here you get x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. And thank you, Vladimir, for the problem. And bye-bye.